So in this lecture, ape self-domestication, we're actually going to try to apply what we've learned about dogs to a very different species uh, um, and try to understand the evolution of one of our closest relatives based on what we've learned about dogs. So uh, for this lecture, the genius of dogs, uh, it's going to be chapter five that's going to be most relevant. Uh, and there's really no lab activity from Dognition here. So I want to introduce the concept of convergent evolution. We talked about the ecological approach to cognition, and this is really one of the most important implications of this ecological approach, which is that you can see that similar ecologies can shape distant or distantly related organisms in uh, analogous ways. So if you look at um, how species are related phenotypically, um, you can find cases where very distantly related species are similar in surprising ways. So if you take the case of uh, marsupials that only live in Australia, and then you look at animals that live in North America, uh, like um, the carnivores, you see that there are very similar species, even though they're completely different from one another. So in the case of the familiar, uh, in North America, we have wolves as a, a carnivore, and then obviously we have um, different types of deer, like elk and white-tailed deer, etc. But when you travel to Australia, where there are no wolves and where there are no deer, and they're only marsupial, we see the same types of animals filling the same types of roles in that special ecology. Within human history, there was a, a wolf-like species of marsupial uh, known as the Tasmanian wolf or Tasmanian tiger, also uh, known as the thalassine. Unfortunately, they went extinct, as far as we know. Uh, it'd be really cool if there were any left. And uh, obviously, they're herbivores, uh, but of course, they're in the, in the form of kangaroos. So there's been convergent evolution where basically you have very similar species evolve um, even though they're very, very distantly related on the tree of life uh, represented on the left. Uh, and so that is what we think may be going on, and, and this is the reason why we think learning about dogs could help us understand about um, not only ourselves but other species, because we may see that the same evolutionary process that led to dogs, or certainly as illustrated by the foxes at least, it may be playing out in other species that are distantly related from canids. So that brings me to talking to you about bonobos. Bonobos are one of your two closest relatives, but they're a puzzle to explain how they evolved and their behavior is fascinating. So what I want to do to introduce you to bonobos is to show you a video of an experiment we did where we asked bonobos a very simple question, which is, would you prefer uh, to share with somebody that you're really good friends with or somebody that you've never met before? And usually when I ask uh, people this question, and imagine I give you um, the example that you went to Vegas and you won some money, uh, it's some discretionary money and you can do whatever you want with it. Do you send that money uh, in an envelope to a friend or do you send that money uh, to in an envelope to somebody you've never met before? And most people, what they respond is, I'm going to send that to family and friend, or I'm going to do something together with my family and friend with that extra money. I'm not going to give it to somebody I've never met before. Well, when we ask that question of bonobos, we get a very different answer. So here's how we ask them. We place food in a room, uh, and um, the food is... Uh, a relatively small amount of food for bonobos and we placed it there before bonobo breakfast so all the bonobos that we're gonna be talking about are very hungry um, and this is some of their favorite um, fruit treats uh, and then what we did is we um, uh, had one bonobo that was in the adjacent room who was good friends uh, of the bonobo who's going to be let into this room with food and we had another bonobo that um, uh, they actually had never met. And you can see there's a one-way key in the door, uh, and there's no way for the um, bonobo in the adjacent room to open the door. Only the bonobo coming into the room here in the video could potentially open the door. So, the, so they have the choice of either eating all the food or sharing with somebody who's a friend or somebody they've never seen before. 
And what we found the bonobos did is not only do they open the door and share food, but they prefer to share with someone they have never met before. They prefer to voluntarily share with a stranger. So they're sort of like, um, uh, <laughs> and they obviously have a, a, a good time doing it, and um, they are sort of like the original Good Samaritans, helping strangers uh, in a way that even probably humans wouldn't. And we got really interested in what is it internally, what's the internal process? We've observed a phenomenon now, now can we explain it? Is it the case that somehow bonobos have a level of empathy uh, that we don't see in other species? And what you see in the picture here is a bonobo yawning, uh, and it ends up that yawning has been used in people and in lots of different animals to measure empathy. And the reason is that contagious yawning uh, or yawning in response to somebody else yawning develops in children as they start to develop a theory of mind or the ability to think about the thoughts of others and those children that don't contagiously yawn tend to have developmental delays in their social skills and often are in the autism spectrum. So we know that contagious yawning is actually related to the level of empathy you feel um, for others. And in fact, in studies of bonobos and lots of other species, the closer the relationship you have with somebody, the more likely you are to contagiously yawn when you see them yawn. So you can watch in your, uh, your classrooms or your board meetings or whatever and see who actually feels empathy for one another. Uh, but we went and did a study of bonobo contagious yawning, but we varied who they watched yawning. Uh, and we looked at, did they yawn when they saw a group mate yawn? Did they yawn when they saw a stranger yawn? And the answer was that they yawned for both. And in fact, they yawned a little bit more for strangers than they did their own group mates. And that is a lot like their sharing behavior. Uh, that suggested to us that bonobos may be feeling a very basic form of empathy for strangers that we don't see in their close relative, the chimpanzee, where you see when we do when when other researchers have done um, the similar research but with chimpanzees, you do see chimpanzees contagiously yawn for groupmates, but they don't contagiously yawn for strangers. We took to be really interesting evidence that bonobos, together with their sharing behavior and their yawning behavior, seem to be uh, attracted to strangers and you know, the technical term for that is they're xenophilic. They really like people or I should say like other bonobos uh, they haven't met before and that's very different uh, from chimpanzees and probably very different from humans.